all right what's going on everybody dark and wendy's back at it again with another video um as you can clearly see on my screen we're back on my wiki once again and we're just going to continue on our journey through kilo generation two and we're starting with spooky the enigma pokemon because i don't even know what it's supposed to be like when i was first creating it i didn't really know what i was going to do i just knew i wanted a ghost type and i don't remember what the basis of it was in my list like i guess it was just i just put enigma or weird thing there let's see this pokemon is said to be the formation of ghastly spirits that try to destroy lives it has a relatively jolly attitude and is very friendly toward all people and pokemon so it's so it's made up of, of spirits who want to destroy your life but it's friendly towards everybody at the same time weird i think i based it off of yeah i said it was based off of ectoplasm because i didn't know what i really was doing so when I, whenever I uh, whenever I revamp it, it'll probably end up being more like ectoplasm. I don't really know. I don't really know how I'll do ectoplasm without it just being a generic blob again. But we'll see. Next we have an Enigma. The, again, still the Enigma Pokemon, but it has more of a form to it. I don't know what this form is supposed to be at all, but it has like slime ectoplasmic colors like the green, the bright greens and the darkest greens and stuff like that. So, it inhabits abandoned buildings and haunted houses living in the darkness. It passes through people's bodies and steals the plasma from their bodies. Ah, okay. Well, I guess that's okay. It's all right. <clears throat> yeah. That, it works. It works. It's, I guess I can say it's, still say it's ectoplasm. It's kind of weird. Now, okay, so a story about these two. There's actually, there was actually an, an extra evolution for it called Scarin Scarino, but... It was just it just felt like it was too redundant because it was just a it was pretty much just a bigger version of Animigma. It it just felt like it was just it just felt like it was gonna be pointless, so it was just ended up being scrapped in the long run, so it never became a part of the decks. Fun just a fun fact. Alright. <clears throat> Going on to Bait Trap. Ah one of the one of the one of the revamps that I'm most proud of. Bait Trap is based on an angler fish, but it's based on a specific angler fish. It is currently based off of wolf, wolf Trap Angler. So, as you can see, this is a Wolf Trap Angler. And this is Bait Trap. They don't look one-to-one -one the same, but I really like how Bait Trap came out based off of something that looks like this. So, right and so, yeah. I really like Bait Trap, the luring Pokemon. It dwells in the darkness of underwater caverns, using its hook-like spine to lure prey towards it. Their bones are often collected and used to make strong hooks. Now, the reason I'm so proud is because the original version of Bait Trap looked awful. Everything was awful. Just you can just tell automatically. Just look at this. Look at this. Like the brown like my 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 eyes back then just i hated i hated bright colors so much because it just ended up irritating my eyes and i just it just didn't it just felt like it didn't work but so i just kept on using browns and grays and stuff for everything that i felt like didn't work so that's why I, like this yellow isn't as yellow as it should be and like the blue isn't as bright as it could be this is just like muddy and I don't like it anymore. Now the the blue is well the blue is a little bit brighter here, but the the gray around it and everything still just doesn't work well, in my opinion. Now <clears throat> it's just I don't know I just don't like it. So yeah, this one and it, this one has not it not not only has does it have a unique body shape and form and everything compared to this, it just looks. 100% better and I just feel I just really like it a lot like the how I did the shading how I did the highlights and everything for it I just really like everything about it now next up we got Transfend the transparency Pokemon it's pretty much based on the x-ray fish I really like how this one came out too Tran Transfend dwell in underwater deep underwater caverns feeding on mini scale and shrimpy their transparent skin and slow movements have earned them the nickname of the Swimming Skeletons. So yeah, these guys are pretty much these guys are pretty cool. They're like I said, they're based on the X-ray fish. That 
uh, yeah, the X-ray texture and everything automatically. You can just automatically tell. Yep. So yeah, let's. I really like how this one came. I really like, same as Bay Trap. I like how this came out compared to his predecessors because these guys just had like basic bot well well I can't really say that compared like compared to compared to current trans fin this one probably has the most unique body shape just because of how round and bulbous it is and stuff like that but there was something about it that I just didn't like I just didn't like something about this so and this one was just a mess it I mean I mean it's pretty much the same one as the one we just saw but like what are these fins like the fins are rectangular and this one's like straightforward and the mouth was just weird so yeah current trans fin is probably the best one in my opinion even though the the one the one from 2017 probably has the best body shape because of how not it's not as generic as this one looks but yeah i like it next we have monotin i still really need to redo monotin because it's simple, it's a simple design, but but I still haven't touched it. I may I may do it later on. You never know. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's pretty much it's pretty much based on the sea anemone, monotin anemone. So yeah, monotin. They extend their feelers to unimaginable lengths in order to inject their prey with a potent toxin. It sticks to the bottom of the sea, using their long poisonous feelers to grab their prey. Yep, all with a all with a cutesy cat smile on its face. Yes, like I said, it's just a sea anemone. Can't really say much about it. I keep on pressing the wrong buttons. Uh, I'm, I'm, I swear I'm a professional. I'm not. I, I, I'm not really, but yeah, just pre, like, just just pretend I'm a professional. Let's see. Now, original monotone was just pretty much fatter. That was pretty much all there is to it, and the feelers were just spikes. This, the feeler just looks spikes. It still it had the same cat face and everything, but other than that, it just looks like a. It's pretty much just a pot with anemone in it. That that's what that's what their bases look like. Next up, we have Quillo, a porcupine hedgehog thing. But yeah, it's pretty much a. It's pretty much this guy. This guy's evolution line is pretty much the counterpart to Juby's evolution line. Because both of their evolutions evolve are in the next generation, and they both evolve when traded with a king's rock. So these guys are pretty much ver like consider these guys version exclusives or something. So let's see. Its body is covered in hot quills that are able to create bursts of electricity. They shoot their quills at berries to roast them before eating them. Now, these guys are weird because, like, I like how they turn. Like, I kind of like how they turned out. But I feel like I still need to revamp them again. Just because, like, yeah, this is 2019. The original versions were all the same. It was just, like, generic round football body. Hold on, let me get this close up. Yeah, gen generic round football body. Some quills, just some, qu some quills sticking out. It was pretty much just meh. So, and I use a, a better body style here. Like, a, not as generic, but good enough. So yeah, Quillo, Quillo, well, I'll, I'll say Quillo needs to be redone. Next up, we have Spike Wheel. Now, Spike Wheel looks like it has, like, <clears throat> like some kind of swim swimsuit going on, and which is fine. Don't really care that much. One stab from its quills can cause a burning pain that will last for weeks. Oddly enough, their quills are sometimes used by hairdressers to curl or straighten hair. So yeah, their, their quills can be used to like as, like, curling irons and stuff like that. Mm hmm. Not much. Not yeah. Yeah, I can't really say much about it. Like I like I like how this turned out compared to Quillo. So Quillo is probably the main one who needs to be redone. Uh, let's see the old one. The old one is I I can't even remember how the old one looked. Ah, they still had they still had the swimsuit thing going on too. Okay. I don't know why I chose to have them be swimsuits because I guess because sunbathing and stuff like that, like people on the beach and stuff. But yeah, I definitely need to change this one because this just looked awkward. 
And this and this just looked bad because of how the quills were, as well as how the just everything looked. So yeah, this is so yeah this this is this is the best iteration out of all of them for me. So I like it. I like it more. I'll probably keep I'll probably keep it how it is. Let's see, Instacrest. Instacrest is based on a Luna moth, the, the moth that grows up without a mouth. I don't so. Yeah, when it, again, this is another situation where I took the name of the mod, uh, I took the name of the animal, creature, or whatever, and just did my own iteration without any actual research or looking at how it looked. It was just my own iteration of it. It stands on its tail whenever a full moon appears. They are known to get signals from the moon whenever their green eyes glow. Yeah. Uh, so it say so it says it stands on its tail whenever a full moon appears. So that means it, it's mobile on its on his, it should be still be mobile on his legs, but it doesn't feel like they are. the the, le the legs are too close to the body. <sighs> I don't know what I was doing, but but that's what that's what that's just what that's what's what happens when you grow up. You look back at your old stuff and it just just question everything you were doing because you don't know. Crescoon, the cocoon Pokemon, it looks like a fish. That and I, I was kind of I was kind of fine with that. It was kind of funny to me, so it's whatever. It cleans the tree branches and absorbs moonlight through its horns. Its little legs don't allow it to walk correctly. Yeah, so it does have legs. These little things right here are legs, but they're too short because the damn horn is through its body. So yeah, the legs are kind of pointless there. Uh, but it's bug and psychic type, so it's pretty all right. Still, a, it's a cocoon of a Luna Moth, blah, blah, blah. Like I said before, it looks like a fish. It's in. The Luna Moth, Lunath, the Moonbeam Pokemon, it's, it's okay. I'll say it's okay. It, it's okay. I mean, it's just like a bug with, with moon wings. I can't really say anything bad about that. I mean, it's cool. I'll say it's cool. Oh, ooh. I could probably, I could, whenever I revamp it, I could flip it around so that it looks like it's, oh, I could do that. Okay. Okay, I just got an idea for when I revamp it at some point. Okay. Automatically. All right, it's moon-shaped wings absorb moonlight in order to give it power. It only appears on nights of crescent moons. Eh, I guess. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. And, oh, well, I guess I didn't give it a mouth. I gave it a nose. Uh, at, least, at least something's right. At least something's right. All right, we got older right the stink mine Pokemon is based on the stink bug and landmines. All right, accidentally stepping on this Pokemon tri triggers a special gland inside of his body to spread a terrible odor to the surrounding area. His diet consists mostly of rotten fruit. Yeah, oh, I like I like it. I mean, it looks kind of awkward at this position or angle or whatever, but I like it. Let's see, older right the old version was kind of weird because. I, you never you never really saw the top of it. You only just saw the bottom of it, and you, and it was always weird to have, like how the head was positioned. Like I didn't know how I was supposed to do it, so it just ended up being at the bottom of the body instead of like right here where it could where it should be. So yeah, you didn't see the button again. You don't see the button at the top of it. It's just like something weird. Like the head should be right here, but I put it at the bottom of the body. Like it's like Kabuto having like the thing at the bottom, like having its real eyes underneath its fake eyes and stuff like that. But yeah, at least I fixed it for the most part, at least. Next up, we got Right Palm. <clears throat> right Palm is a stink bomb Pokemon. Obviously, you can see it was based off of a pineapple. Well, I'm just I'm just playing. It's a grenade. So, this Pokemon is one to be recommended when its antenna is pulled. When threatened, it releases gases inside of its body that causes its shell to expand and eventually explode, releases the noxious gas. Yep, it's pretty much cool. It's, this, this one's pretty much cool. Um, I don't, like, I remember that the, the, the first iteration did not look like this. It didn't really have, I don't remember, <clears throat> I don't really remember what it looked like, but... It wasn't. It was. It didn't have this grenade shape. It did not have this grenade shape at all. So, let's see. Let's see if the original one is here in the first place. Nope. Oh well, I guess it already. It, it always had this shape. Then it was just more blatant. It was just a lot more blatant. 
like the pin is no longer look like an, the pin doesn't look like an antenna. You can only see one of his eyes. You, it still has his le his arms and stuff like that, and overall it just looks puffy and everything. Mm. Yeah, this well, well, this one still has his arms too. Oh well, but yeah, you can see he has both of his eyes and stuff like that, and it looks it looks okay. It looks okay. I'll say that. I, I still need to revamp it though. And then we got Stinchar, the Stink Bomb Pokemon. Which is based off of, I think it's a, a hornet, yeah. <clears throat> it's a hornet. I don't know why I said I chose a hornet, but yeah. Stinchar's tail is able to spray a repugnant odor that can curl noses from miles away. The, put, the button on its chest releases an odor from its head that acts as a knockout gas. Why does it have a button, though? It could, it can just be an a organ. It could just be an organ. <sighs> I really got it. I really got a lot of changing to do. But hey, I'm, I'm just gonna say this now. Like I said, y'all gonna hear me complaining a lot about stuff that I should have done and will, and probably will do when I re when I change stuff. So, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Gallagro, the Gathering Pokemon. Now, okay, Gall Gallagro is one of the, the those mods where it's just there. It's like Dex filler, I'll say. Like I I know I wanted a Gallagro, but it's pretty much, like it's nothing it's nothing it's nothing special I'll say, but that's okay because not not all un unlike what's mo what a lot of people seem to believe these days not every single Pokemon needs to have a valid reason to exist or not every Pokemon has to be completely viable and competitive or have some deep meaning to them they can just exist because they exist. There's a lot of animals in real life and stuff. And objects and, and formations that exist just because of nature and just how just because of how the world works. It, we don't there we don't we can question it all we want, but they exist. So there's no point. In it. So there's no point in questioning why certain Pokemon exist and why certain Fakemon exist or whatever. So that that's my take on it anyway. But yeah, for Gallagro, it's just one of the mods that are just that it, it just exists. It just lives its life. The Gathering Pokemon. They're known for gathering berries for people they befriend, and groups of them compete to see who can gather the most items. Pick, pick up and pickpocket, run away. Yeah, it's pretty much just it just gathers stuff. Not much to say. Like I said, it's just one of those mines where it 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 it, it exists. It exists. All right, Belkin, the Aqua Bird Pokemon, one of the first mines that I ever designed. Uh, memories. <clears throat> Let's look at this. Let me see if this older one is here. Uh, well, no, the oldest one isn't here. But here are the older one. Here are older ones. This one is pretty much uh, this. I think this one is pretty much like the second iteration of the one of the original. So this is the closest. So this is good. Like it's okay. Not much to say. Like it just has the bean body and the tail is just automatically attached without any kind of extra stuff the feet look awkward and stuff like that yeah pretty much that's it and then this version is just too bright the yellow is too saturated and the the teal and blue is too are too close together for me it just feels meh but yeah this one's better this one's a lot better and it looks, and it looks, it just feels and looks a lot better. Now, Belkin, well, Belkin already always had an evolution when it, it was first made, but I didn't, I couldn't like think think of a good cohesive design at the time, so I just put it on a back burner until another generation, which is why its evolution isn't right next to it. Instead, of Ingarina's next instead of King Rebel. So these playful bird Pokemon love to battle and will playfully wrestle on the surface of water. They use their beaks to crack and model some shells for food. Yeah, pretty much like not there's I can't really say much about it aside from the fact that it was one of the first mods that I made for the that I posted online at least for DeviantArt and everything. Water is based on a water kingfisher. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Next up we have <clears throat> Ingarina, one of the ones I still need to revamp. 
it, it looks okay, but it just needs it just needs retouching up because you can tell by these edges and everything. So let's see, Ingarina, the gracious Pokemon. Their beautiful movements can put anyone in a trance. They dance on the surface of water with the one in the center being the leader. Yeah, I probably need to like add some stuff to it to make it more like a ballerina. It looks okay though. It looks okay. Not much I can say about it. Well, hold on, let me see how the older one looked. I I, I remember how the older one looked. The other one looked just looked generic. Just had the regular Oh well, I guess it's not your wait. Oh so well I, I okay I guess. I remember the original one just had the generic flamingo pose with one leg up. Kinda like kinda like this but more static. But yeah, moving on. Next we have Meningo. The wild pup Pokemon. It's pretty much based off of Dingo and just puppies and like wild puppies and stuff in the wild. Wild puppies in the wild. <laughs> Way to go, redundancy. Whatever. Uh, yeah, let's see. Years ago, these Pokemon were worshipped and loved by humans, but these days they are seen as a nuisance. As a result, they are often abandoned. They travel in large packs and typically avoid human contact. So yeah, human humans l used to love them a lot, but eventually, but eventually they got a, they started to get abandoned and stuff like that. So at that point, they started to distrust humans and stop messing around with them and just avoid contact with them altogether. Now, as you can see. It has three evolutions. However, only one is in this generation with it. The other two, the other one, this one, Mandid is, I think, in generation four, and Rabbi, Rabbi is in generation, and is in generation sixteen. So yeah, it's gonna be a while before we get to those. So don't worry about them right now. All we got right now is Dingrow, level thirty-three while outside. Dingrow, the wild dog Pokemon. It looks okay. I really like this angle I did. Like I just wanted to do a new, a new different angle instead of like the typical three fourths or whatever it's called, the three fourths pose position that most Pokemon art has. I tried. I, I, just, I tried. I just say I tried. Let's see, very few Pokemon. I mean. <laughs> there. Very few humans are able to catch these Pokemon, and even if they are effectively captured. <clears throat> And even if they are effectively captured, it ignores their trainer's orders. If it sees a human, it would immediately try to it would immediately try to attack them due to its hatred of them. So yeah, Dingrow pretty much hate humans because of its experiences as a Meningo being abandoned and everything, having to fend for itself. So yeah, Dingrow has this resentment towards humans. It's it's kind of messed up, but it's how it is. That's just how it is. I really like see the older Dingrow. <clears throat> the older Dingrow is they're, they're they're pretty fine. They're okay. They're okay. Not much not much else to say about it. They were they were okay. They 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 were pretty much the same, just had brighter colors and stuff like that. Just I just wanted to do a new pose and stuff like that instead of the same old, same old. <clears throat> so next up. Alright, so well actually I think I'm gonna end it right there. For this for this episode, um, well we'll continue on with Zabel next time. Uh, thank you all for watching. Be be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy what I'm doing so far. Uh, we've got a long way to go. We're only on 281, and I think it stopped. I think Generation Two stops in like the 400s. So be prepared. <laughs> we've got we got a long journey ahead of us. So, but for right now, we're gonna take a break. Uh, be sure to be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said before, uh, Dark and Wendy out.